In this video, we will cover the basics to get you started with your new headset. Let's first take a look at what is inside the box. Along with your new virtual reality headset, you will also find two 60OF controllers with batteries, two wrist straps, a charging cable, power adapter and user manual. The first thing you will need to do is charge your headset. To do this, simply take the charging cable and plug it into your headset here. You can plug the other end into any USB port or you can use the provided power adapter to charge your headset via an electrical outlet. Please note, on both the Neo3 Pro and Neo3 Pro i headsets, the charging port is located on the top of the headset. Next, prepare the controllers by removing the seal within the controllers above the supplied batteries, here. The controllers will be your main input for interacting with the headset and the content you will experience. You will see four buttons and a joystick on the controller, the release on the underside and a grip button. This is the home button. With this, you switch on the controller with a short press on the button. No matter where you are, pressing this button will take you back to the home screen where you started. If you press and hold this button, you can also re-center your view. The right controller has the A and B buttons, and the left controller has the X and Y buttons. The A button is a selection button, and the B button is a back button. The X and Y buttons can be used just as the A and B button to select and exit apps. This button is programmable for your application needs. This larger disc shape is your joystick. When the controller is turned on, a light next to the home button is illuminated. If you see the light flashing on your controller, it may be searching for a connection to your headset in the process of a firmware update, or if it is flashing very fast, telling you that the battery power is low and that you should consider refreshing the batteries. That's it for the controller for now. Now, let's familiarize ourselves with the headset. The first thing to do is carefully remove the protective covers from the front of the headset, the back of the strap, and from the lenses. An important note to avoid damaging the screen. Do not expose the lenses to sunlight or other bright lights, as this may result in permanent damage. The Neo3 Pro and Pro Eye models already come with an elite strap. Here, on the back of the strap, you will find the battery for the headset. This allows for a more balanced fit, which is perfect for longer sessions in VR. To adjust for a comfortable fit, turn the knob at the back of the strap. The rubber strap can also be adjusted for a better fit. The Neo3 Pro and Neo3 Pro i has a camera component that can be used in application development. On the side of the headset, here, you will find a similar set of buttons to the controller. The home button takes you to the home screen and allows you to recenter the headset or wake it from sleep mode. The button in the middle, here, is how you confirm a selection if you are not using the controller. This button, just like the one on the controller, is programmable for use within your own apps as a developer. The great thing about having these functions on the headset is you can go controller free if you want to. Simply do not pair the controller on startup. Use these buttons here and move your head to direct the crosshairs over your intended selection. On top of the headset, we will start with the most important button of all, the power button. To power on, press this button for approximately two seconds you will see a small light glow right next to this button to indicate it is turned on. To power off, press and hold for approximately five seconds. If you have the headset on at this time, you will see the Pico logo animate and fade out. If you need to reset the headset for any reason, you can do so by pressing this same button for 10 seconds. Handy tip. You can also tap this button to set your headset into sleep mode while still powered on to help conserve battery when not in use. Next to the power button is the USB-C port. As you saw earlier, this is where we plugged in our cable to charge the headset. Here is the DisplayPort cable port and behind it is where you secure it 
with a specially made screwdriver. Please note, the DP cable is sold as a separate accessory. You will find the volume adjustment here, on the bottom. If you want to use headphones, you'll find an audio jack here. Built-in speakers are located here in the straps. The microphone is located here. To put on the headset, place over your head, starting with the front framed on your face, and slide the solid strap down the back of your head. Adjust the fit using the knob on the back of the headset. Our Pico headsets are designed to be worn by people who wear glasses. Position the headset to carefully place the face pad slightly against your glasses and hold as you move the strap over your head. Now, you're ready to go. Let's take a quick look at the Pico user interface, also referred to as PUI, you will see in the headset. This may look slightly different from the home screen you see, depending on whether the headset is in kiosk mode or automatically launches into any partner content. Here you will find easy access to the highlights, app library, Pico store, as well as the file manager. The file manager is an area where most of your content will be stored, especially if you are sideloading apps, videos, etc. Your installed apps will be stored in the app library after downloading. To the bottom of the PUI, you will find battery levels, options for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, settings, and finally, the profile button. Before you can log in, you'll need to make sure that the headset is connected to the internet via your own local Wi-Fi. To set this up, you'll need to locate the Wi-Fi button along the bottom of the PUI. Please choose your network from the list. You will now be prompted to enter in your Wi-Fi password to connect. After entering your password successfully, you will be connected, and you will see a green check mark indicating you are connected to the specified network. Once connected to your Wi-Fi, you may see a notice that there is an update for your device. So feel free to complete this process, as Pico's technical team is always improving the headsets. You are now able to log into your existing account or create a new Pico account if you want to. You don't actually need to create an account or be logged in to use the headset or sideload content and applications. You also won't need additional apps or devices, such as a mobile phone, to connect and set up your headset. Everything is managed through the headset itself, unless it is part of a partner's application. If you wish to download apps from the Pico store though, you will be required to create an account and log in. You can still browse without logging in. Business apps can be found in the Apps section of the store. If you do want to create a Pico account, locate the Login button on the lower left of the App Library or Pico Store. You will then be taken to the sign-in screen. You will need to enter your email address and create a password. Once you click in one of the fields, a keyboard will appear. Your email address will be used to verify your account request. Once you have filled in the required information, you will see a notification that the registration was successful. For the last step, a confirmation email will be sent to you. Now you are all set to sign in with the new credentials. You are now all set to get started.